Otherwise, the temperature goes on going up. How do we do it? Well, just like that. Just like that. We have to make an intervention that slows the rate of heating, stops it, brings it back down again. If we simply bring it down to the zero from equilibrium, we will have succeeded in stopping runaway change. We will have stabilized the planetary climate, but at a cost. Because the temperature increase at stabilization point will still lead to catastrophic impacts and tipping points and chaos in many of the climate systems. So we also have to go through some period of global cooling into negative radiative forcing, as they say, to make certain the temperature doesn't exceed tolerable limits. And then we come back to thermal equilibrium. That's the overall strategy. It is not, of course, the strategy being addressed through the IPCC processes, the Montreal Protocols, and so forth. They are addressing a climate agenda that is way out of date from the reality of the system as we know it today. How on earth can we... Remember we saw the, the images from James Lovelock uh, in the video interview in the forum a couple of days back now. And James was saying we've, we've passed the tipping point in the global system and there's nothing else we can do about it. There are going to be some surviving species, but basically it's the end. I know James fairly well, and I've sat actually in that chair in his study that we saw him speaking from, and uh, we had some time together. James's understanding of the climate system is brilliant. His understanding of Gaia interactivity and the life support system, supreme, a genius. And by the way, he's a technical genius as well. Some of his inventions are currently on Mars, measuring atmospheric uh, chemical composition. But James is a strange animal totally unwanted child for whom social interaction has always been difficult. And when Vu described the almost paradisical house that he has in this lovely hidden valley in Devon, it's a retreat from humanity. James's being in favor of the nuclear option comes actually from his rage at the thought of a wind farm being on a hill that he could see. That's the motivation. And any sense of invasion of his deep, secluded, private space brings out a reaction. He has no faith whatsoever in human systems being able to respond to this problem. I think it's slightly different. The human spirit has immense resilience. We know we can solve problems when we're faced with them. We can get to this. It is not a question that the structures we have are incapable of making decisions and responding in a crisis. We can do it. I do not accept the sociological pessimism that says it's now impossible because we only see the performance of the monolithic structures that we have. I remember that when Yves de Boer was speaking to the business community on the 11th of December in Bali, he said what we have to do is to turn round the super tanker of investment. And I thought, you know, super tankers take about 22 and a half miles to stop in an emergency. They're a bit inert. And they've got one brain, the master, in that tiny little tower at the back, dictating where they go. And they are full of hydrocarbons. You turn them around and put them somewhere else, they just deliver the hydrocarbons somewhere else. We often see our human institutions as super tankers. Inert, dinosaur, rigid, difficult to change direction. But you know, human institutions are made of people. They are only inert because we project authority into the institution and give it power over us. What we have to do today is to deconstruct the dinosaurs and to move from the super tanker to the shoal. You know, shoals can respond very quickly. They can respond to threat and they work together. The signals that go between the fish are almost instantaneous. In technical terms, it's to move from rigid systems of command and control to the, the flexibilities and resilience of complex systems, of com systems of complexity, of multiple parallel processing, of distributed intelligence, of people power, of the emergence of social ability to respond to the crisis almost instantaneously and globally. We can do it. We have the 
the support structures and communication strategies, mobilization for lifestyle change. This is not an impossibility. It is only impossibility if you cannot imagine it and then make it happen. So I offer you from supertanker to show as the transition in enabling solutions for tomorrow's world. Yes, there exists a state of planetary emergency that is not hyperbole. There does exist a state of planetary emergency. Planet Earth, we have a problem. But Gene Prance's philosophy in the response to Apollo 13 was not to bring in some Swedish economist to work out the cost benefits analysis of bringing three men back to Earth. He said, no, whatever it costs, this is a question of survival. Failure is not an option. Thank you very much again.